everyone, I'm MTS, aka Mel the Scientist, and today I'm going to check out Dolphins Are Racist and I Can Explain by Casual Geographic. I am offended and I want to get to the bottom of this. Dolphins are the sweetest creatures, I think. I need to know why racist was used as a particular term for this. That's really what intrigued me. Why, why the word racist? How are you racist underwater? That's what we're going to find out today. And hopefully we'll get a good laugh in between. So let's check it out. Someone on Instagram asked me what animal other than humans is the most racist. And that's difficult because animals don't possess a concept of morality or an understanding of dolphins. It would uh be dolphins. Nature made them squeak because if dolphins could talk, they would burn Twitter to the ground every time they opened their mouth. And really? I say that because bottlenose dolphins will bully other dolphins with different colorings or spots for no reason. If you really see dolphins gang up on another dolphin and push it around, you'll wonder why until you realize the victim has spots and you're watching a hate crime. But by far, the real malicious intent is saved for porpoises. Dolphins will harass and beat porpoises quite literally to death. This porpoiseide can be a result of territorial disputes, food competition, or sexual frustration, but it's far more likely that there are just dolphin supremacists out there. I <laughs> don't really know what causes dolphins to become perpetrators of first degree assault, but they'll bludgeon the animal in unprovoked attacks that can break the jaw, bust the ribs, and even fracture the scalpula. Don't if say that! If this doesn't kill him, he'll be in perpetual pain. Not to mention, sometimes they cosby them too. Sometimes 20 bottle faces will gang up on porpoise with a flurry of whistles and clicks that definitely translates the chance of dolphin power and choice racial slurs. Yeah, dolphins are racist and they're not shy about it. Someone on Instagram DM me and asked what I think the most disrespected animal in nature is, and after thinking about it, seals get violated by almost everyone. First of all, they get clapped so badly by great whites they call it the KKK. I can't really be mad at that because even roid guppies have to eat. But orcas <laughs> take the evisceration to another level. I've actually said it a thousand times, but orcas pimp slap seals so hard and so high that it tears their skin off when they hit the water. Dang! Dang. Strategy, but it turns out, orcas just really like being dicks to seals. Even on land seals- No, I have to believe there's a reason. Animals are not like humans. There's gotta be a reason. This homicidal Oreo dolphin. Speaking of land, seals somehow managed to get griefed by seagulls too. Because seagulls will blind them by gouging their eyeballs out and eating them. I almost yeah, well they do that anyway. A 1500 pound assault weapon with paws is another thing they have to worry about. Polar bears yeah, them polar bears. Call. When the seal comes up for air, the polar bear will pimp slap its head off. <laughs> killer whales, they'll create waves to knock seals off ice. And if this were hunting, I'd be okay with it. But they'll wait for the seal to get back on the ice just so they can knock them down again. I'm not even going to mention what these guys do. They get bodied by every aspect of life and I'd feel worse for them if it wasn't for this video. Five lies that the pitbull can make if they are tired of hearing. Number one, pitbull jaws don't lock and their bite isn't any stronger than a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd. Number two, pitbulls will never nanny dogs that you can leave alone with your children for long periods of time. It sounds sweet, but this myth actually hurts them because without supervision, toddlers can irritate the dog by tail grabbing or ear pulling, and this is exactly how a headline gets written. Pitbulls aren't naturally aggressive, they actually tested as the second most tolerant dog breed behind Labradors. It's actually true wow. to worry about because they're one of the least tolerant. I know. Because owners refuse to correct aggressive behaviors and dogs yeah. are in your purse. Pitbulls are blamed for causing the highest. They get away with anything. The big reason for this is because they get misidentified up to 60% of the time, especially in shelters. And number mm. five, it's not impossible to rehabilitate an aggressive pitbull. There's organizations whose entire purpose is to retrain pitbulls that were used in dog fighting to make them safe enough to be adopted into a new home. Some of these ex-fighters ended up getting jobs as therapy dogs. And I just want to say for the record, when I volunteered at an animal oh, shelter, look at that puppy. Zero problems, it was the kittens that gave me all kinds of hell. Your child can visit steamy jungles, grassy plains, and the dark depths of the ocean. I should Ooh. explain what the hell this is. That was an angel shark, and that's the worst Call of Duty player you'll ever meet. <laughs> angel shark will lie motionless for days waiting for anything bite-sized to accidentally pass above its head so it can take its life. Sounds like a cheat code, but there's it's no not the only one that does it. Camel shark stab pets kills like no other. But you don't have to worry about them snatching up your leg because they're only interested in fish, crustaceans, and mollusks like squid. That being said, angel sharks are a lot like electrical power sockets. They're only dangerous if you're stupid enough to poke them. Now you would think that's common sense, but because these sharks stay perfectly still, scuba divers think it's a good idea to touch them, and that makes these sharks go from mannequin challenge to homicide. Luckily, attacks are rare, and as long as you're not an idiot, this sea carpet won't fade you. Okay. Good thing, too, because there's a shark in this picture, and he may not be an angel, but he'll turn you into I can see everything him. you would ever need to know about What is that? It's the only mammal with scales, and are made of the same stuff as your fingernails, which is keratin. Oh. They're literally the inspiration for Sand Splash. Because oh, they have long really? They to walk on their hind legs, and they look like a geriatric looking for a dropped nickel. Oh, now hold on. I'm afraid they'll roll into a ball, and if that doesn't work, they'll release a foul-smelling fluid used to mark territory not very different from the anal assault that stunts them. They roll around in mud to stay cool and to keep parasites off of them. Now, please enjoy this video. Uh, 
Okay. Baby penguins are scientifically called panga pups, and they get around by hitching a ride on their mother's tail. This walking what an interesting creature. Termites, and since they don't have teeth, they snatch them up with a tongue that can be as long as their entire body. Believe it or not, penguins are actually closer related to cats, dogs, and bears than they are to anteaters and armadillos. Unfortunately, hmm. because of those scales and its meat, it's the most trafficked non-human mammal in the world and the most endangered Really? But they're protected by the government, and they have been making a comeback. Oh, good. So the turtle might just be all right. Talk about the vampire deer. They have tusks that can be over three inches long. Wait, so what is that? A vampire deer? Why is this the first time I'm hearing of this? I'm going to look that creature up. I'm not saying it's not cool. I'm just saying I've never heard of it before. <laughs> By facial muscles, they can actually move those fangs when they need to. While eating, they'll draw them backwards so they don't get in the way. And while squaring up with another male, they can actually force their fangs out and even pull the tusks closer together. Cool. In your society, the bigger your fangs are, the more you pull. Males use those fangs to run face with each other, and the canines are so sharp that the loser can end up permanently maimed. Even the female water deers are on go because they'll chase around Aww. any deer or human that comes near their birth territory. They the should. The reason they have fangs where most deer have antlers is actually simple. In the shrubby underbush where they live, antlers will get caught in stuff all the time. Baby mm. Chinese water deer are small enough to make a bed out of the Of course, when they hit puberty and those teeny turners come in, they become a lot less cuddly. And believe me, nobody wants shanked by Bambi on their obituary. Someone asked me when I was <laughs> the CEO of Black Air Force Energy, so here's an entire lineup. At number one is a honey badger because when your go-to move involves tearing off the family jewels, you're the most dangerous kind of crazy in the form of a roid skunk. Number two are chimpanzees because they'll jump each other and tear off the throat and rip off the ball. Woo! I can't even show you a picture of this because I would get banned faster than Tony look faster than Zoe look faster than James jo God damn. They've also been known to kidnap human children. I still can't believe that's a fact. Number three are magpies because not only can they bird smack you into the ER, they'll remember your face for years and then teach their chicks to hate you. So beeping with one is the really? entire bloodline. At number four is the Cape Buffalo, not because they take life, but because how they do it. The entire herd of buffalo would circle you and take turns wow. going to stand back up just to Ray Rice you again. They'll also purposely lead hunters into tall grass just so they can blindside them and turn their skeleton into origami. Number five are orcas because they bully the entire ocean for no reason at all. Seals, sharks, stingrays, moose, penguins, not even other orcas are safe from the wrath of this ocean oreo. They're one of the few animals that seem to torture animals for fun. When you put Stop the it. No, they orcas, don't. Nothing positive comes next. Not Bundy. Society that are actually really fuck Money. I don't think you can ever comprehend how dirty money is. All of our mothers told us, don't touch that. You don't know where it's been. But we all conveniently yeah. disregard it when it comes to a 20. Report stated that traces of cocaine can be found in 80% of dollar bills and the same bacteria you can find in toilets, 94%. Mm. So wow. money's worse than a toilet because at least a toilet gets clean. One dollar bill can possess 3,000 flavors of nastiness. Which is why you're better off skinny dipping in the Hudson River. Now why would she do that? Using your dog. Dog mouths are not cleaner than people's and their mouths contain hundreds of bacteria. Also, they use their tongues as toilet paper, they've been known to eat their own fudge, and they make new friends by introducing their noses to another dog's anus. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you not to kiss your dog because if you went to college, I can guarantee you've kissed way worse. All I'm saying is, oh, now hold on. It, blowing out birthday candles. I hope to the GOD this never becomes a thing. Blowing out candles on a cake intended to be served. Yeah, that's violates health codes and it shouldn't take a low key and, and high key nasty. Especially if it's children because they can't be trusted not to aerosol a salt of cake. Playing Russia roulette with germs, I don't even want to know how many times I lost that game. Someone on Instagram asked me what animals are surprisingly good mothers. Hyenas are one of the most feared pack animals in Africa with jaws that can amputate a rhino and gang mentality that can send a lion running. But mother hyenas are gentle and protective of their cubs. Mother hyenas will spend two weeks in the den with their children to form a strong bond and recognize them by their voices. Uh -huh. She'll nurse them for 15 months and will slowly introduce them to the clan to socially integrate them. She'll also disembowel any animal that looks at them the wrong way. <laughs> a lot of koalas I don't blame her. Part, but one thing you can't deny is that they are devoted mothers. The mama koala will carry her little Joey around everywhere for about a year. And unlike marsupials like quokkas, koalas don't abandon their children when being chased like by a predator. They'll either carry her baby to safety or if it comes down to it, fight to the death to protect it. Not bad for a Bundy bear. Next are bats because just like koalas, they carry the little baby around everywhere. That includes while they're flying. Some bats like the greater spear nose will babysit pups that aren't even related to them. And vampire bats have been known to adopt the babies of their dead friends. The mother and pup have such a strong relationship oh, that's that nice. they form a strong family bond even after the pup is old enough to take care of itself. A rocking with bats? Did mothers yesterday, so here's animals you didn't know were great fathers. Cassowaries are the velociraptors nature didn't have the balls to fall, but it's actually the males that are in charge of guarding the eggs, while the females, I assume, listen to Meg the Stallion and dip. Oh, uh, now hold on. This family of chicks for nine months as he teaches them the best places to find food. Aww. And if anyone comes near them, he'll catch a life sentence if he has to. In That's fact, right. Types like Rias and Emus have the males in charge of bringing up the babies, while the females mate with as many males as possible and call it a hot wing summer. 
The father African bullfrog acts as the bodyguard for hundreds of his tiny tadpoles. Mm -hmm. He's so overprotective that he'll jump that. anything that looks like a threat. And if their nursery pool starts to dry out, he'll save their lives by digging a canal to a bigger pond. He'll guard the tadpoles with his life until they're old enough to take care of themselves. Not only is the giant water bug probably the only insect father that doesn't straight up dip on his kids, he'll carry up to 100 eggs right on his back. He'll even do push-ups to help his unborn children on his back absorb more oxygen. He literally puts the whole team on his back for two weeks. He doesn't need child support because, damn it, he is the child support. He <laughs> a good one. About. Stars in the Pacific have been seen mutilating themselves by tearing their old arms off, and then the severed arms will crawl around like something out of a Stephen King web dream. Oh. The stars can normally sacrifice an arm to escape a predator, an arm that they can grow back. Yeah, they Not can. Not only are these sea stars maiming themselves with no predators around, their bodies disintegrate, causing the ocean floor to be littered with a bunch of sea star carcasses. These sea stars oh, are finally disfiguring and killing themselves in an auto mass genocide. Basically, it's I am legend, but instead of Will Smith, you got Patrick Star from SpongeBob. Oh, the okay. The has thousands of these sea stars fighting for survival. Kind of like this zombie apocalypse game that lets you see how long you would survive in a zombie takeover. My record's 10 days, links in my bio if you think you can beat that. But it turns out the reason for this self destruction is a virus called Sea Star Associated Deaths of Virus. Hold up, let me charge my computer right quick. All right, we're back. This pandemic has caused hundreds of sea stars to mass murk themselves. It's believed this virus is caused by warmer ocean temperatures as a result of climate change. So yeah, we're responsible oh, for this. Oh wow. Too. That trick might be a pack quick if you don't get our act together. Wow. I thought it was gonna be a ten minute video on dolphins, but I'm cool with other information I learned. Well if they if they are beating up other dolphins based on how they look, then not wrong. But I think the coolest thing that I found out about was vampire deer i had no idea that existed i'm definitely gonna look that animal up also we got some really nice information on great animal mothers and fathers that's a sweet way to end out the video oh no he ended up he definitely ended the video with a sea star carcasses but yeah another good video from casual geographic i learned a lot as usual thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Peace out.